Okay, welcome back. Um, we're just about finished uh, 813 Panther. And one of the last things I like to do is add on extra track. And I've been just looking through our Concord book on the Panther. And you can see in this picture right here, the Panther just covered in track. Now I'm not gonna bury my Panther in the track, but one of the things that you want to concentrate on is little details for the track. Um, a little different than the running track that's against cobblestone and the polished steel against it and stuff. We're going to spend uh, a little bit of time painting individual track links. And uh, here's a perfect example of a tank that's that's got its track on some cruise paint, for instance, 813 right over top of spare track with just a, a white paint. Um, these numbers are somewhat important to the for the command tanks and what have you, so um, displaying the numbers on top of track was pretty common. So now I'm not gonna bury my turret in track. I'm just gonna hang the track along the back here and like the box art on the Tamiya kit, just in the back here. Now I, I would suggest for, um, that this track is a little bit inaccurate. I mean, this tank wasn't running on these tracks, so obviously uh, a little bit of rust is one of the only places in a World War II tank that I like to put a lot of rust is on these spare pieces here. Um, as we've talked about in previous episodes, the life expectancy of Panthers and World War II tanks is not that long, so rusting is is not a common sight, but Certainly on these, the, the hanging down tracks, they certainly are. So, and it adds nice color to your, to your tank. I mean, this is, uh, um, I like to harmonize the whole diorama. So I'm going to be using colors that are in this brick to be putting on the brick. And I've already used it on the exhaust system. So when I use the word harmonizing, all I really mean is using a combination of the colors throughout a whole project it just it's more pleasing to the eye it's that simple so i'm going to use my famous uh colors here that i've used on the brick wall and on the muffler system to me colors um to do the spare track on the back and then when it's all done believe it or not i take probably xf60 and with the tank sitting there and 99 percent thinner I'm just gonna spray the whole unit, but th this is, um, you know, groundwork, panther, and everything. Just give it one little blast, and you'll see how uh, they'll just tighten right up together. They'll be one of the same. There won't be a panther sitting on a road anymore. It'll be one diorama with a with the panther on it. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show painting the track. Uh, how to get a little more color out of them and there's a few nice books on this as well I think Adam Wilder and his series does it and I'm pretty sure that Mike Rinaldi's photographs in his books uh, tank art books show the different uh, weathering of track and I mean Mike really goes to town on them and spends a lot of time on them and it, and it really shows it looks fa fabulous so um let's get started okay so one of the things that comes in the kit are these tracks i'm showing you the box box for the tracks with the wheels but inside the kit they also give you these nice individual track links and then you can drill them out uh through here and put a rod in it it's a little more authentic for hanging on the for the for hanging on the track racks so but what we're gonna do is just show you how to paint them and I really suggest that you uh, then you can now go and study your bulldozers and what have you so that you have different colored tracks because as you can see the tracks are on here are a little different too so what we'll do is we'll just co color a few I won't glue them on today we'll basically call this project finished but um, 
because the tools I'm gonna still put the tools on but you guys know how to put the tools on I'm, we're not gonna make a uh, episode out of that but um certainly doing things like this don't take these kind of things lightly you know these things are important to your model you know they add color and texture to your model so uh, like I said in the last video about Tom Brady and his New England Patriots he didn't do it alone and this tank isn't going to survive on its own it needs all this little backup here so it's very important to spend time on these individual things such as the little shovels and the tools and what have you I, I can't tell you enough about how guys have a beautiful beautiful panther or tiger or, you know their individual piece but then they sort of given only a 75% on the little tools and what have you, and then, and then the whole thing falls apart. Um, a little bit of glossy glue and, and things like that, that, that's unnecessary. It takes you just as long to do a lousy job than it does a good job. So, you know, spend the time and do a great job. You know, spend an extra, if it's an hour, it's an hour. It's, it's hobby time. It's, you know, the best time there is. So, um, don't, um, don't hold back on these individual little pieces here. They make the complete um, unit fantastic. So now, like I say, I, I use the same colors. I use a very small palette when I'm modeling. And again, in the end, it all harmonizes together. I'm not jumping around from color to color. So after I've painted these individual track links before this video and I painted them this uh, German gray so they're painted German gray and now I'm just gonna go directly to the flat I'm just gonna my airbrush is loaded I'm gonna put a little bit of flat in flat flesh there's already thinner in there All I have to do is just stir it up. And I'm gonna be spraying at 15 pounds PSI. I can go, um, oh, up to 20, but I'm gonna spray it between 15 and 17 PSI in my airbrush. And I'll just fire it up and away we go. So I'll just paint three or four of them. Don't worry about the tweezer shadow that you've, or you've hidden the paint. Just go back. See that little, where the tweezer was? Just go back and cover that back up. And the same with all three. The other thing you can do, obviously, is take a little bit of blue tack and tack these all down. And then you're not going backwards. So believe it or not, that flat flesh, to me, a number XF15 is where I start. And then I'm going to, now I'm going to switch colors to hull red, but this is going to be thinned out. A great deal. I'm gonna put the lacquer thinner in my scoop and then um, just with a one paintbrush maybe put one dab into the thinner. So basically I'm gonna spray spray paint dirty thinner of hull red over top of the flesh. 
and uh, away we go. Just give me a second to change the paints. Now as far as cleaning the airbrush from color to color, all I'm going to do is dump out the XF-15, the flesh, into my... Um, you, you don't want to flush it down a sink. Pour it into a little disposable coffee cup or something and then just get rid of the whole thing once it's hard and dry. So I'm just gonna and then spray a little bit of clear lacquer through my airbrush and then switch the colors. So it's very simple to do. I do not strip down my airbrush between colors. Now at the end of the day today once I've sprayed this uh, number 9 and number 63 and 15 and what have you maybe after four colors or the fifth color then I'll strip down my airbrush and when I say strip it down the water airbrush is revolutions they're so easy to clean um, I just push the needle through the nose after taking the nozzle off uh, swipe out the end and pretty much by the time you've drunk a cup of coffee your airbrush will be clean so it takes very little time I'm talking six to seven minutes for the uh, cleaning and because as you've noticed in the other episodes because I use so much thinner and just uh, tints of these colors my airbrush is never very dirty I never have ever picked the airbrush up in the morning and found out that it's not clicking the Iwata Revolution constantly goes and I think that's because I use so much thinner as I go. Like I say, most of the projects that I work on are spray painted with dirty thinner. Whether it be green or uh, German yellow or, or these uh, colors here, basically it's just dirty thinner that I spray on my models. So that's probably why it's not a lot of effort to clean my airbrush. So, do, so don't ever be afraid not to purchase an airbrush because oh it's a headache I gotta you know clean it for half an hour every time I change the colors and I don't want to do that that's nonsense don't panic about that that's if you buy a good quality airbrush with a 0.5 needle and I can draw the finest lines on this table with a 0.5 that if you're doing 35th scale armor um, I would find very little reason to go below a 0.5 but we all have our habits and we all have our modeling that we want to do, so um, knock yourself out with whatever needle you need, but just remember that um, use a lot of thinner and, and it'll never get too dirty. So, all right, let's put on some Hall Red and there we go. Okay, so let me just back up one second. One of the things that's a nice little texture to add is if you add a little bit of a sponging first to the XF-15 flats, um, flat fit, uh, flesh. So let's just take a couple of these tracks and we'll add a little bit of Hall Red using the sponge technique, which you've seen in the other video. So we won't go too far into this, but as you know, I did it on the mufflers here and what have you. So. A little bit of a little bit of sponging just for texture and doing these little tracks it's great because you can make each and every one individual and you can also you don't have to hang them all on the on the panther you, you know, do this as a practice thing. Um, some Panthers had two pieces of track. Some Panthers had all kinds, nine or ten. So, All right, so those are sponged. And now the magic begins. Now we're gonna paint. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna now spray hull red over top of these tracks. And it's gonna be diluted a lot. It's gonna be maybe 98% thinner. All I'm gonna do is take a paintbrush, put one scoop 
into my paint like so and the thinner is already resting in there now red is a pretty dominant color so you have to make sure that it's very mild in there like like I say 98% or 95% as we all know when I'm painting my model there's a lot of ish in there 95 ish <laughs> percent so all right I'll just look up the airbrush And we're gonna have a little bit of residue of that flesh in here. So we'll just spray that out. More than I thought. But all right, so here's our nice pinky color coming now. So there's one, oops, one track. Now I'll take the next piece and I'll put a few extra coats on just to make it a little different than the previous piece. So that's slightly different. Now we'll dig down for a little darker color. And this track's different again. Now we'll just let those dry, won't take more than a minute to dry, we'll give them a little bit of, oh say a MIG wash of some kind, we'll dig up some MIG washes, we'll strike them with a little bit of MIG wash and a little bit of brownish tone in oil paints and see what we come up with. So just remember that uh, you can still see the flesh bleeding through and what have you. And the other thing is, let's say our tank was, you know, early in the winter. Don't hesitate to do the hairspray technique. You know, the little part where we, uh, Rinaldi seems to have perfected. So you can now put hairspray on them, paint them white, and rub that off. You know, there's a few little ways of doing it. So then we're just gonna weather up our little rack here, put a little green, a little bit of yellow on it, and then hang these off of it. And, and I like to drill it out, drill out the shaft where the, where the pins are and then put rods through them and make them a little more attractive as well. So there's all that things that you can do to uh, enhance a 25 year old model to make it look, you know, like the contemporary ones that are around today. And I know that Ming and uh, Tacom have come up with some brand new King Tigers and they're just going to be a joy to build and um, you know all those things are probably going to be looked after as opposed to a 25 year old model but don't have to worry don't hesitate to take these off your local hobby shop shelf and, and tackle them because to me is doing an excellent job still back then and still today as you saw with the Valentine so um Anyway, I will get out some oil paints. We'll just brush on a few little oil paints and then we're pretty much finished 813 as a project. So bear with me. Okay, so our tracks are dry from the Tamiya paint. And now I'm gonna put on a little oil wash 
I like the MIG uh, 1002 is the product number. It's called Track Wash. But you can use other MIG products or AK or uh, what have you, your favorite go-to oil paints. And um, I poured out a little bit onto this little dish here. Just these dishes are non-spill and these, this type of bottle can accidentally tip. So I have a little bit of thinner here. I like to use Humbrol thinner, as you guys know. And um, so here's the one that we spray painted a few minutes ago. Here's the one from yesterday. And as you can see, they look close, but they're not the same for sure. And that's better. And, um, you know, like who, who knows where the tracks came from? They take it off abandoned Panthers to protect their hulls of their tank, their turrets, what have you. So you're going to get individual track links from, I I'm sure, three or four different Panthers at times. So, I mean, just, it's all dependent on circumstance right but anyway i'm just gonna add a little color now so i'm just gonna put a little bit of humbrol on just a dab and then go to my mig track color and as we all know rust can happen you know, at different speeds, so. But that's pretty much it. And as you can see, I put very little on there. And this one I can add a little more to. I still have a lot of flesh showing, so I can, if need be, I can put a lot of track thinner on here. Little bit of humbrol, put it down the stretch there, take the track color, streak it down. And there we are. So there might be a little more that I add to this. If once the track color is dry, there's um, some little area that I have to touch up, maybe with a 10 0 brush. That's no problem. But what I'll do is I'll get it on the tank and let it hang for a day, see how it harmonizes with the rest of the tank. And if need be, I'll just give the whole tank a spray of XF60 German Yellow 98% thinner, and it'll tighten all this up and she'll be, she'll work perfect with blending in with the tank. So anyway, that's, uh, that's our episode for today and like I say spend a lot of time on the individual pieces that are added to your tank um, it'll really pay off in the end you'll get more enjoyment okay, out of it so this is basically going to conclude our episodes on Panther uh, 813 um, moving forward on it I'm just going to add and tie in those things that we talked about and uh, I want to just thank everyone for watching and if you have any questions, please either contact me at Hornet Hobbies website or by telephone at 416-755-4800. Uh, and uh, any questions, just direct them to us personally. And uh, if I can help out in any way, I'll be glad to do so. So thanks for watching. And we'll, we'll start a whole new unit uh, momentarily. So thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.